going to have a co-host today. Good morning, everybody. Morning. There is Ava Grace joining Papa this morning. Hello. Say hi. Say hi. Where's everybody? There. Say hi. Ah. <laughs> there. Okay. So today is Tuesday, January 2nd already. January 2nd. Yes. January. <laughs> Good that you caught it. I said July 2nd, but I have January there. I don't know why. Okay, it's July 2nd, 2019. Are you sure you got the right gospel? Huh? Are you sure you got the right gospel? Yeah, yeah. I got the right gospel for today. Okay, the gospel is from St. Matthew, chapter 8, verses 23 to 27. Okay, you listen up, okay? Listen up. As Jesus got into a boat... His disciples followed him. Suddenly a violent storm came up on the sea, so that the boat was being swamped by waves. But he, Jesus, was asleep. So I want you to keep that in mind. Here was the boat of the disciples being swept away by the waves, okay? buffeted by the waves, back and forth, to and fro. But Jesus was asleep on the boat. They came and woke him, saying, Lord, save us, we are perishing. He said to them, Why are you terrified, O you of little faith? Then he got up, rebuked the winds and the sea, and there was great calm. The men were amazed and said, What sort of man is this, whom even the winds and the sea obey? So beautiful. This, this particular gospel reading today is a, a demonstration of what kind of man this is. Jesus Christ, right? So even the apostles were puzzled and asked themselves, what sort of man is this? Okay. What sort of man is this? Well, it is the sort of person who is both God and man. In this very short gospel today is a demonstration of that union, which is called in theology the hypostatic union of two natures in Jesus Christ. You got one person, Jesus Christ, who has two natures. He is both God and man. Perfect God and perfect man, not 50-50. Not half man, not half God. But he is fully God and fully man. Okay? And in this particular gospel today, we see in a very, very short story how God, how Jesus Christ was showing exactly his human side and his divine side. What was his human side in this story? What? He fell asleep. Imagine he fell asleep. Sleep is a very normal, ordinary activity that human beings do, right? And Jesus Christ fell asleep. Yesterday, we were just commenting about how he uh, was telling the, the people who wanted to follow him, right? The, the birds of the air have nests, foxes have dens, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. Well, apparently, there is where he fell asleep. <laughs> That's where he lay his head, in the boat of Peter, maybe, while fishing, right? So, Jesus demonstrates his humanity. Where else in the gospel do we see that Jesus expressed his human side, his humanity? And, <clears throat> and it is a very clear uh, expression of the humanity of Jesus. Where else? Huh? What is that? <coughs> can I can't hear you, Mia. Where? Huh? Remember when he cried for Lazarus? When Lazarus died and he cried. See? So he was expressing uh, sorrow over the death of a friend, of a dear friend. Right? And in fact, he went to the house of Mary, Martha, and Lazarus often to rest. Because just like any human being, he gets tired. So he would go there to rest. And he would invite the apostles also, right? Many times, let's go up to the mountain to pray because that is, be, that is restful for him. 
Okay? And then he must have had get-togethers with his apostles, the same way that, that we do in the family. Right? So, our Lord has expressed his human side plenty of times. And how has he, how has he shown us that, that he is God? How has he shown us that he is God? <clears throat> Where? Through? Through his miracles. And here is one of those. Right? When he tells the, the sea and the wind, calm down, calm down, calm down. So that's a very, very good um, way of showing in one simple story how Jesus Christ is both God and man. So theologically, remember that concept, remember the term, the hypostatic union. That is what that is, right? You have one person, Jesus Christ, and how many natures? Two natures. God and man. Okay, now, now in understanding that, that's why. Why is that important for us in our in our uh, in our spiritual life? Why is it important to know very well that Jesus was a man like us? What is the impact of that in our lives? Why did in the first place Jesus become man? Why? To save us. To save us. Yes. Right. But he wanted also, besides all of those uh, reasons related to salvation. So that we can like, relate to him as man. Very, very good, Sophia. So that we can relate to him as the way that a man and a person would. It is Jesus' way of making us understand that he can sympathize with us. He can empathize with us. He knows our weaknesses. He knows the things that afflict us. He knows our miseries. Right? Don't forget that even he became hungry. Right? He became sleepy. He became hungry. He became tired. Just like us. When we work and we do our chores and we study and we, we do the things we need to do in life. We also get tired. We get sleepy. We get hungry. Right? And Jesus got tempted too. Remember? He was tempted by the devil when he was fasting for 40 days. Towards the end of the 40 days, he was tempted by the devil. The same way that we get tempted by the devil many times during the day. Right? Many times during the day. So our Lord wants to show us that, look, I know exactly your human condition. I know exactly what you feel. I know exactly how you think about things. I know exactly how you react to things. But what has he offered us? What has Jesus offered us? He has offered us the example, number one, of how to deal with our human conditions. He has shown us the example of virtues that we can put, we can put into practice so that we overcome our human weaknesses and our human tendencies. And then the other thing that Jesus wants us to understand is, is we can run to him. We can go to him. He wants to make us realize that, that we should go to him with confidence that he is not some kind of deity up in the sky, that he is actually very close to us, that he knows us. He is familiar with our situation and that we should, be, we should feel at home praying to Jesus, talking to Jesus about ourselves and about our needs. Remember, he says, your father knows what you need even before you ask him. Of course, that's God the Father in, in that imagery. But the same thing is true with Jesus Christ. Right? He knows us. He knows us intimately. He knows our human condition. And therefore, he understands our weaknesses. He understands our needs. So when we pray... When we pray and we talk to Jesus, as we should be, as we try to do every day, right? Right in front of the Blessed Sacrament when we go, we go to Mass in the morning, we should speak with Him with confidence. We should speak to Him as a friend. We should speak to Him as a confidant who knows, but with the faith that, that He can listen, that He knows, He understands our miseries. Just the same way that He told the Apostles, Oh, you of little faith. You know, I am here with you. Nothing bad could happen to you as long as I am with you. Okay? So the same thing is true with us. Jesus is inviting us today to go to him, to talk to him, to, to pray to him because he understands us. 
He empathizes with us. He sympathizes with us. He rejoices with us. He celebrates with us. Okay? He knows our condition. So let Him be part of our journey from this life, from this earth, towards heaven. Okay? And that we can do every day, keeping in mind our Lord is with us. From the Blessed Sacrament, okay? To, to our churches, to our uh, and to our soul in grace. It's the same Jesus Christ. Okay? It's the same Jesus Christ, the God and man that this gospel today is demonstrating for us. Okay, that's it this morning, everybody. We will go to Mass now. Say goodbye, Eva. Bye-bye. Eva, there. Okay, let's go. Have a good day, everybody. Bye. Bye.